Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I got a video on how to make a no hardware tree clip for your hammock suspension. It's one of these little guys right here. It's made to replace a hardware with a piece of high strength Dyneema that you'll never lose and is super easy to operate. This eliminates the need to pass through your loop and it just connects around your loop like a carabiner would but it's made out of Dyneema. And when you're around the tree, the pressure of the rope closes this loop up like a high-powered soft shackle or soft link. And it's made to replace stuff like this, your uh, high dollar uh, blings, your carabiners, and strap clips for a much cheaper and much lighter and what I believe is a better option. So for this project, we need 30 inches of spiceable Dyneema cord and for for 30 inches a uh, 3 16 inch line works good this is Saturn rope that I get from uh, got rope on eBay and I'll show you where to get that then of course we need measuring and cutting and splicing tools uh, step one is we're going to thin the ends of our piece a little bit and to do that I use a yarning needle and I just take since this is an eight strand rope I'm taking four of them out and I'm only doing it about three quarters of an inch up that's all you need for this project you don't need to take out more strands because we're not doing an eye splice so I'm just going to take uh, those four strands about a three-quarter of an inch up and cut them and just do the same thing on the other side take about half of the strands out and cut those guys off Okay, now my piece of 30 inch Dyneema is ready to uh, get built. The next item that we're gonna need for this is our hammock strap that we plan to use. This is one of my one inch hammock straps. It has the sewn in loop on the end there. And we're going to take your piece of Dyneema and do a half turn through your loop so you just enter the loop once with one strand and then enter the loop one more time so now you've created a half turn through the loop basically you made a loop onto the loop and then line up your two your two tails and measure nine inches in we're going to measure from here all the way back to nine inches and this is a good time to get your small strip of masking tape ready. A rubber band is also suitable, but I found that masking tape works the best. So I'm going to measure. There's my eight. And one more inch. There we go, nine. All right. And then get the masking tape on there and just stick those two strands together so that the two nine inch pieces stay at nine inch while you're tying the knot. And you need about nine inches for the knot too, so that's why we do nine inches. And now it's time to tie the knot now that we've got this installed onto our strap. So we're going to do a button knot. Take one strand and loop it around the other strand like that. And then we're doing the same thing with this strand back to the other strand, kind of returning the favor. I'm going to go and loop around this strand. And then I'm going to also, the strand that I'm still working with, go through the loop that I created earlier. Over the top of it. Just like that. And for the next part of the knot, you can see the two loops here on the bottom. We're going to take these, the tails, and go around, around the knot and up through those loops. And when we come up through the loops, the only important thing is that when we come, when this strand goes around and goes up through this loop, just make sure it comes up through this loop beyond this one. So as it's coming around, we want to make sure we've gone past this loop, or past this strand before we come up here. And then the same thing over here, as this one comes around, 
to go up through that loop just make sure it comes past this one first so now's a good time to get whatever splicer you're using and enter the knot where the strand should come up so the strand should come up here beyond this strand I can just go in with my splicer and then grab that strand that's supposed to come around and go through there and now I can use the splicer to pull it through this is much easier and faster than using trying to use your hands so here we go I'm just pulling it pulling it up through there and don't worry if things kind of look crazy at this point just just remember where these strands are going and so now I got to do the same thing with this strand I got to go around the knot and through this loop and I got to go beyond that strand so go beyond that strand with my splicer and through the loop and then wrap around with that strand and pull it through and then once you pull those two strands through you'll have this kind of thing this thing that kind of looks like the a rose or something and just check that it's right up against your tape where you want it and uh, don't go pulling it too tight at this point you can snug it up a little bit to make everything look exactly the same but for the next part of this knot this strand and this strand are going to go between these two strands and come out the bottom so I like to start with the yarning needle to open it up a little like that and then now's a good time to get the tape out of our way and then also you can use a bigger yarning needle or a paracord fid you can also use like a ballpoint pen or anything for for this little part I have one of these little forceps that works really good because you can put the forceps in there and then use the jaws to kind of open it up a little bit and then once you got it opened up a little bit just go in from the bottom with your splicer and grab one strand at a time and pull it through and the knot's going to kind of start looking weird as you do this but don't worry just uh, got to open it up again sometimes back in with the yarning needle maybe go back in with this thing and then like before up with the splicer between the two strands and pull it through uh, sometimes it can get a little difficult like this one Ugh. sometimes it'll fight you don't worry about that if it won't go through and you have to pull too hard just pull your strand out and maybe go back in with like a, a needle nose pliers and that'll give you a little bit of leverage to open it up and once you pulled the strands back through the final step to making the knot is just to bury the strands in the legs and before you do that I recommend pulling the legs tight and pulling the strands tight just because if you don't do that first when you go to use this and the knot gets tight the location on the main strand where you've buried the short strand say you start it up here once the knot gets tight it'll come down here and it just won't look as perfect so then just pick a pick a leg and pick a short strand that seem close to each other it doesn't really matter and then go in about an inch down and grab it pull it through go up as close to the knot as you can way up in there like that there we go and pull it through with the splicer on this part when you grab these strands make sure and have like the least amount of strands um, extending past your splicer because it can it can pinch right in here if you don't have a good grip like I just did I just screwed up I tried to get a low amount of strands in there and just uh, carefully pull that through once you get past the little pinching 
action that goes on right there, it'll come right through real easily. And then to make sure that you didn't get any kinks up in here, which will happen sometime, just grab this part with your little pliers and give it a little tug. And then push the outer rope over the top. And then just do the same thing with the other set of strands. And you don't need to worry about when you thin the ends, you see how this braid is coming apart? Don't worry about that. It doesn't matter. Once it's buried inside here, none of that matters. Just try to grab all of the strands, like the short ones. If you end up with one of the short ones hanging out here, it will fold in half as you pull it through. And that can give you some trouble. And we're just pulling it through there. Sometimes you can grab the knot to give yourself a little leverage. And once again, double check that it's all the way seated. Pull the outer rope over the top. And now you're done. Now you have your no hardware tree clip made with 30 inches of this stuff. You can go longer, but shorter than 30 inches, you have one that is a little bit harder to use. And now basically you have a carabiner that is ultralight and to use it you just lay your other piece of strap in there put the big knot through the loop and you'll be around the tree and for best performance on this you want your strap to be laying on not on the two thick legs but on this loop part because that will close the loop around the knot um, I've hung with it with the strap pulling over here and never had a problem. I mean the weight the weight of the strap will will tend to close this whole unit up. It forces this big knot into this loop and if you have it over here not only does it force the knot into the loop but it closes that loop. And of course to open it you just pop the loop over there. And that's it. That's how you build the no hardware tree clip. Thanks for watching.